Good afternoon. It's three o'clock, so we will begin our weekly briefing brought to you by the emergency leadership team. Uh, I'm Dr. Ruth Jackson, and I'm joined by the members of the executive policy group, Dean Joshua Snavely, Chief of Staff, Mrs. Teresa Powell, Dean Joshua Busby, Chief Holland, and our special guest. So in today's briefing, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the spring pre-enrollment credit. We'll have our COVID-19 weekly status update. We'll talk about important dates from residential life and housing, which will include how to obtain housing for next semester, as well as a look at the new process for leaving belongings and the express checkout. And as always, we'll end by reflecting on resilience. So pre-enrollment started last week. We're encouraging every student to contact uh, the advisors in University College, our academic success coaches, or if you have over 40 credits, your faculty advisor, so that you could be eligible for the spring enrollment credit. As you may recall, those of you who were here last year that we offered a spring pre-enrollment credit last fall in preparation for spring 2020. And we thought that this would be a great time to, uh, in, to have that uh, provided for our students once again. To pre-enroll, remember that students have to have completed a FAFSA, FAFSA, have it on file with the Office of Financial Aid. You have to have a balance of less than $200. There could be no holds that prevent pre-enrollment, and this can include judicial, bursar, or the one is too many. And students must be in good academic standing with the university. Students who've pre-enrolled by the deadline of this Friday, uh, sorry, of Friday, November 13th, next Friday, uh, at five o'clock, will receive a $100 credit toward their spring 21 bill. Remember students who are on academic probation or students who've been academically suspended are not eligible. Uh, however, if a student is on academic probation, they can enroll after the fall 2020 grades have been processed. So again, these students are not eligible for the $100 pre-enrollment credit toward the spring 21 bill. Uh, students have to return next semester in order to be eligible and the $100 credit will be applied to the accounts of students by February 4th, which is after the ad drop period. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Dean Snavely, who will provide our weekly update on COVID-19 numbers. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, and good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well and recovered, uh, either from the power outages or uh, all the things you may have experienced during the busyness of last week, and um, hope you are well. Here is the picture this uh, today, as of this morning, as of noon, um, November 2nd, uh, COVID-19 in the state of Oklahoma and our local region. So as you are probably aware, the total case count continues to rise in Oklahoma, just crossed 125,000 cases, which does still represent a weekly increase. Um, fortunately, this week we saw a basically the active case count holds steady. Um, and unfortunately, we did see a, a continued in, increase in the deaths linked to COVID-19 in, in the state. Logan County, where Maine Langston campus sits, uh, also still experiencing weekly increases in case numbers up to 912. We did fortunately see a pretty significant drop in the active cases in Logan County this week. So we hope that continues and we'll continue to watch that 
Um, also, fortunately, no additional deaths in Logan County at this time. Langston University, this is uh, all of our campuses and sites. We have a total of 41 cases that have occurred since we opened campus operations again this summer, but only currently, fortunately, as of now, five active cases that we are currently working with and dealing with and helping those uh, folks implicated and involved and suffering from that. So that's our picture and overview for this week. I'll turn it over to Dean Busby. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for again for joining us and I see several students on as well. So uh, I'd like to say good afternoon uh, to our students. Uh, it's my honor to introduce uh, our special guest today. Uh, she's been on this job and the position that she's in for a little over two years. Uh, and that is the person of Dr. Carolyn Eastland, who is our Assistant Dean of Students for Residential Life, uh, who oversees our housing operations. And so welcome Dr. Eastland today uh, to uh, the weekly webinar. And so as we're talking about uh, our updated and move update and move out protocols, let's jump to uh, the timeline for move outs. Can you uh, talk us through uh, the specified dates that students really need to pay attention to as it relates to, to uh, dates of importance for move out? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So housing applications opened October 23rd, um, which you can find under my Langston. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, shortly. November 4th, we're going to be providing students resources um, for them to be able um, to pack their belongings um, to, if they choose to leave them or if they need items um, they need supplies to pack their belongings. We'll have that at the clubhouses um, November 4th. So you can go to your respective clubhouses and pick up boxes, tape, um, and items that you may need um, for that. November 20th, um, so in order for a student to be able to leave their belongings within a space, they must have a spring 2021 academic course schedule. The last day to show um, proof of that schedule or to submit a schedule to us would be Friday, November 20th. And then finally, um, all students must be out of their residential area by November 21st at 12 p.m. Dr. Eastland, thanks so much for being with us today. One of the items within the timeline that you presented was the housing application. Can you tell us more about the requirements of that application, um, any parameters surrounding that application and where students can find it? Sure, um, so in order to um, complete the housing application, you must have a balance under $200 or office um, permission from the Office of Enrollment Management. Um, essentially saying, hey, I know I have a balance, but I've taken care of this balance by creating this um, payment arrangement with the Office of Enrollment Management and they grant you permission. Um, this will get you the opportunity to get a schedule. So if your balance um, is under 200 and or, and or you have their permission, then we can unlock your application. You can find the spring 2021 housing application by logging into your My Langston account under quick links and then clicking on housing application and, and um, following the prompts to take you to the steps to complete the spring application. One thing to note about the spring application that's different from the fall application is that there's no self-select option. The team, uh, we will automatically reassign you to your fall 2020 um, housing assignment. If you're looking to make a change in that housing assignment, you must contact us by writing um, at lu-housing at langston.edu requesting a change and we will work on you to um, honor that change if possible. Dr. Eastland, are students able to leave their belongings in their spaces over the break? Great question. Yes, students are able to leave their belongings in their space over break if they meet the criteria set above. So the first thing they need to have, of course, is the spring 2020 academic course schedule. Um, and the second piece of that to do to COVID-19, um, Sodexo facilities, we will uh, partnership with them and they will be disinfecting each individual apartment unit and each room within that unit and or room space as it pertains to Young Hall. So it is important um, that students pack up their belongings, which we'll talk about um, moving forward um, in the presentation. 
And just to note, there is a difference. We will be using strong chemicals to do this disinfecting process. However, they will not clean the individual space of belongings at present. So for example, if I'm a student and scholars and I choose to leave my belongings, the Dexo facilities will be in my space to disinfect the using of the chemicals to basically disinfect the space. However, if I take all my belongings with me, that space will then be cleared and then the cleaning process could take place. So if you leave belongings, the space will only be disinfected. If you do not leave belongings, then the space will be cleaned and disinfected. So thanks, Dr. Eastland. I think that's an important distinction. And I just wanted to take a second to remind everyone the, the reason that Dr. Smith and the emergency leadership team made the decision uh, to make this process different, to allow students to go home at Thanksgiving break was all around um, our desire to not bring people back again after lots of holiday travel. Uh, so all of these steps and the ones that Dr. Eastland and Dean Busby have worked on with the housing teams are all centered around how do we create that safe, um, secure environment where things are clean, disinfected, we're you know, reducing travel and mitigating those risks, those layers of, of defense that we've talked about before so appreciate all the work that's that's gone into this. So first step on the list, Dr. Eason, the sort of boxes and forms sort of walk us through step one. Sure, the team was really great about coming up with a process that's pretty easy to navigate, um, but necessary to safeguard students' belongings and items that they choose to live in the space. So the first step um, revolves around boxes and forms. And so with Essentially, um, starting Wednesday, November 4th, um, you can go to your clubhouse and obtain needed boxes that um, you need to essentially pack up your items within your space. And so during that time, we were gonna, we're gonna provide you with boxes, tape, um, there'll be inventory form for you to inventory your items, which we'll talk about in later steps. There'll also be a winter break checkout list form. This is gonna explain everything you need to do to your apartment room, uh, apartment unit and or room to prepare to move out. So that's setting the temperature in your apartment to 69 degrees, making sure your windows are locked, making sure you're throwing away your perishable items. Um, and then we're also gonna give you an express checkout form. This is the form you're gonna turn in in conjunction with your inventory form and your winter break form. Um, and your key later on in the steps we'll talk about. Thanks, Dr. Eastland. As we move on to step two, can you talk about the packing guidelines? Sure. So you want to make sure you pack all your belongings in accordance with the packing guidelines. Don't worry about scribbling down notes previously right now during the webinar. We're going to provide an email shortly with all these um, guidelines for you. You want to make sure that you throw away or take with you all your perishable items, take down any decorations or anything that you have on the wall. Um, pack up your bedding, closes, personal cares from your vanity and sinks, making sure you pack your personal um, cleaning supplies, dishes, utensils. So you essentially want to pack your space. If, if you're moving everything out of the space, except you're going to leave the boxes in the space for you to return and then unpack upon the um, spring 2021 semester. Thank you for that, Dr. Eastland, and good afternoon and, and welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Dr. Eastling, could you tell us the, the next two steps that students must follow in order to leave their belongings? Sure, I'm super proud of this, the form. The team worked really hard from RA input, our resident assistants to uh, resident directors. Uh, we really worked hard on developing this process of the leaving belongings form. It's an electronic form that's going to be emailed out to you. There's four separate forms. There's one form for each residential um, area for students to submit. So for example, if I stay in Scholars, I would fill out the Scholars Fall 2020 checkout um, check out leaving a belongings form. And essentially it consists of filling out your personal information. So name, ID, cell phone number, email. Um, it also asks if you have renter's insurance for you to tell us yes or no um, to acknowledge if you do or don't because the university uh, we continue to recommend that each student obtains renter's insurance and then it asks you to um, acknowledge three important items you can hit the next slide for me the next one. So the first acknowledgement is loss, damage, or theft. The university is not responsible for loss, damage, or stolen items during this time. So we want to make sure that you understand that um, and be able to prepare um, if anything should have happened by the purchasing of renter's insurance. 
Um, the next um, recommendation is the date to return. So for whatever reason you fail to return, um, you fail to return for the spring 2021 semester, we would hold your items until March 1st. After such time, we would discard your items. Don't worry, we will be communicating with students during that time and sending additional emails, but we wanna make sure that you understand the expectation before your departure um, of the fall semester. And then the last acknowledgement is just understanding that you're still responsible for pre-cleaning your space um, upon leaving or your departure for the fall 2020 semester. So that's just, again, making sure you take out the trash, making sure those perishable items um, have been discarded. If you've been approved for an emotional support animal, making sure you properly cleaned up after that animal and taking the animal with you for the break. They cannot live without food and water um, for the duration of the break. Make sure you take them with you. Um, and just making sure that your space is in good and clean order uh, before you depart. And so you would acknowledge that then. And then the last step would, you would be taking pictures of the boxes and the items that you have in your room and uploading those pictures for submission so we can have one put them in your file. Um, another piece of that is also the express checkout piece. Um, so once you complete these items and you're getting ready to depart for the fall 2020 semester, you're gonna turn in your express checkout form your inventory form where you've inventoried all your items that are within the boxes, your winter break checkout form, just acknowledging that you followed the process of what you need to do in your apartment room or space. And then you're gonna take that in conjunction with your key. Um, and then you're gonna go to your clubhouse. There's an express checkout box in each area where you can turn those in if it's after um, office hours, or you can turn it in to the person that's in your respective clubhouse. Thank you, Dr. Eastland. That was a lot of great information that you and uh, the residential life team have really put together. So at this point, we'll pause and uh, answer any questions. We've received a couple in the chat box as well as in the Q&A. So the first question is, and, and Dean Busby, I'd like you to respond to this one. Uh, Dr. Eastland mentioned renter's insurance. How do we get information about that? Thank, thanks for the question. Um, I believe that was Kayla uh, that asked that question. And so great question, Kayla. Uh, there, there's, we, we have some information in the, in the housing area. Matter of fact, I, I had said call 6028, which is the main housing number. But Dr. Eastland, you can confirm we should have that information on the renter's assurance in, in insurance in all of our, our uh, clubhouses, correct? Yes, we do. So Kayla, you can just go over to the clubhouse uh, and get that inf information. But first, what I would ask you is if your parents have home insurance, you may want to check with that company because you, you could potentially get an umbrella policy to cover you here on campus as well. Uh, so before uh, you look at the other option, um, I would say check with your parents and their home insurance first, but renter's insurance is very affordable. It's low cost, um, but, but it definitely pays uh, to have that. Great question. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Dean. Uh, we have another question. Uh, Dr. Eastland, I think you may be the best person to answer this one. Uh, the person says there's a question about the housing application. Uh, the person noticed two boxes to mark to fill out on the application, one saying spring 2021 and the other saying fall 2020, which one should the person select? The person should select the spring 2021. Um, and again, just note that the spring application is different from the fall in the aspect that you will not be selecting your own room. So um, yeah, go ahead and fill out the spring 2021 application. Okay, thank you. We have the fall 2020 application listed because to some degree, students were still completing, um, late arrivals were still completing the application, but we can go ahead and probably make that invisible right now. Just go ahead and fill out spring 2021. Good question. Okay. Uh, someone asked uh, about a bill. Uh, Mrs. Powell, would you address this one? Um, there are two different amounts 
on my bill. There's an amount on my bill and an amount on my Langston account. Uh, if I have questions, where should I go to get information about my individual bill? Sure, thanks, Dr. Jackson. It looks like that's from, I hope I'm saying this right, Denisha. So thank you for that question. Um, my Langston is typically going to be the most accurate data point for you that's pulling straight from our student information system, but the best resource for that question would be Student Employee Services located in Page Hall on the first floor. You could stop by the cashier window on the first floor, check in with them or give them a call. Uh, they're at 405-466-3212 and they can certainly check that balance for you to make sure it's accurate, but your My LinkedIn account generally is going to show you the accurate balance. Thanks for the question. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Powell. So we have another question in the chat. Will Sodexo be disinfecting the apartments that faculty living on campus uh, have? They'll be staying there uh, during the break. Is, so if yes, is it possible to be notified before the disinfecting process begins? Great, great question. So, so thank you for that question. So, so essentially because most faculty and staff remain in the spaces, that there's not a plan at this time to holistically go in and disinfect every single unit. But if you want to request that, you absolutely can. Uh, there is a window of time that you would have to be uh, out of the unit uh, and then for the unit to air to circulate because there are some chemicals that's used and there's a small odor that's left. It's not an overbearing uh, odor, but there is an odor that, that's left and depending on, you know, allergies and, and everything like that, um, uh, it may, you know, kind of kind of bother you there for a little bit. Uh, but if you want to request that, uh, you can reach out to, uh, to housing uh, and we can work. And matter of fact, I think that's a good question. We can have a conversation with Sodexo at our next meeting about that uh, and then get that back out to our faculty and staff living in campus housing. So we'll, we'll have an update for you for that. Okay. Thank you, Dean Busby. So we have another question. Uh, it looks like the person has reached out to financial aid, but uh, there's been a slow response in settling the accounts. Uh, what should this person do? Mrs. Powell, would you take that one, please? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so if you've not already done so, I would recommend that you reach out to Mrs. Sheila Miguel. She may be on the call. She's the Executive Director for Enrollment Management and Overseas Financial Aid. Um, if you don't um, get a response from her, she's very responsive. So I doubt that that would be the case. But if for whatever reason you do not, um, the the you can always email me directly um, or you could send an email to L-U-E-L-T. Um, we're, we're typically right on top of that. And I'll be sure to see that um, and point you in the right direction. Great question. Okay, it looks like that's all of the questions that we've received uh, at this time. So if you have any questions, again, please reach out to Dr. Eastland in uh, Residential Life and Housing. Thank you so much, Dr. Eastland, again, for providing that information and joining us today. Thank you. So as always, we end with the reflection on resilience. And this week, Dean Busby will share. Uh, it's my honor to, to talk about uh, some frontline workers on campus who have been here throughout uh, the pandemic when it first uh, hit our campus. Uh, they've been there uh, to service our students, to service our residents, faculty, staff, uh, and they've put this, uh, uh, this, this process and this protocol together that we've talked about today. And that's our entire residential life and housing services staff. Uh, there you see a few pictures of them. This is not the entire team, but you see Ms. Sherry, uh, who's our, our administrative specialist, Ms. Fitch, who's our scholars in, um, resident director in the middle there is uh, Coach Roy Moody, who's our Commons resident director, uh, as well as um, uh, Cimarron Gardens. And then there to the far right uh, in her, her face shield is Mrs. Kimberly Palmer, uh, who is the Centennial Residential 
uh, the re resident director. And so really want to acknowledge this team for the work that they do. Uh, working in housing is not an eight to five uh, job uh, at all. Uh, every single one of our housing employees do have to uh, uh, work our on-call hours, which is after hours, right? So, of course, the office is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. Uh, to 5 p.m., but from 5.01 p.m. to 7.59 a.m., including the weekends as well, uh, every single one of our housing professionals are working our on-call number uh, for when students uh, are calling with issues after hours. Uh, and so really want to acknowledge them and thank them for their work. What you see there is uh, our professional staff. Of course, you've already heard from Dr. Eastland, Ms. Sherry as our administrative specialist. We talked about Ms. Palmer, uh, Coach Roy, uh, Mr. Roy Moody, uh, Ms. Tierra Fitch, Scholars Inn resident director. Uh, Mr. Marlon Briscoe, who was not pictured, is our Young Hall resident director. And uh, a lot of you may know Mr. Eric Harris, most commonly referred to as Rev on campus. Uh, that is our Young Hall night manager. Uh, and these uh, this staff also works with our resident assistants, uh, which uh, is some 40, about 45, 48 uh, um, students uh, who serve uh, in all of our, our residential properties. So that's Scholars Inn, that's Centennial Court, that's Young Hall, that's Commons, uh, that's our student staff that support our housing operation as well. So really want to acknowledge them and thank them uh, for their work. Uh, being out on the front line and serving our students uh, and faculty and staff in a in a real and dynamic way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Dean Busby, and we echo that uh, note of appreciation to our residential life and housing staff. So this brings us to the end of our webinar. Please join us next Monday, which is November 9th at three o'clock for our weekly briefing. So we hope you have a great afternoon and take care, Lions.